Hi there and welcome back to the Duke of Scopus Studios here in Geneva. I'm joined today by Carl Gustav Landin from IUCN. So welcome Carl. Thank you so much Jessica. Great to be back. Fantastic. Well it's great to have you back. So what do you see happening in the offshore oil and gas sector with the current low prices? Well actually I think we're seeing some quite dramatic shifts right now. Several of the large oil majors are trying to cut costs. So a number of the big projects that have been under works for some time are being put on ice or they're or put at least in a much slower pace. Part of that is uh, drying up of some of the financing, so it's hard for them to raise all the money for some of these very expensive projects. Another part of it, I think, is the sense that uh, they don't know what's going to happen in the future. So we've seen this enormous burst of new production coming from the shale, uh, oil and gas, and that I think has really shifted the whole dynamics. So overall, it's a sector in great turbulence, uh, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty, and uh, there's also been somewhat of a slowdown of the economy in some places, so that's meant that demand is not growing at the pace which uh, we were foreseeing a few years ago. And what are the implications of this on the environment and the impacts on the industry? Well, there's good news to this, which is some of the riskier things might not be happening. Uh, there's this sense, I think, that uh, you'd put off things that could risk the company. On the other hand, there's also a somewhat negative side, which is previously with higher profit margins, some of the companies were quite prepared to invest um, significant amounts in environmentally beneficial projects, uh, trying to uh, offset some of the risks, uh, trying to find ways of mitigating some of the negative things happening. Now some of them are cutting all costs across the board, which might also then involve uh, cutting costs associated with um, things that are actually totally essential for, for a safe development of, of new uh, production facilities. Absolutely. And, and are there any uh, geopolitical shifts that you see affecting, sorry, geographical shifts that you see uh, affecting the new exploration production over the next couple of years? So I think one of the, the, the big shifts, of course, has been the whole Arctic uh, development. Uh, a lot of us thought that they were going full speed ahead. I think several of the companies now are much more hesitant. Um, one of the reasons is that there is this perceived risk that uh, if things go wrong there it will have a really negative impact and you can even risk your whole company if you, you fail. Uh, another feeling I think is that uh, there are no new sources coming online which are going to be much cheaper and much easier to manage and where you can also have a much shorter term uh, turning them on and off. If you're making you know, a $10 billion plus investment you're pretty much stuck. You have to use it, you have to run full speed ahead, and there's no you know, second hand about it. If you're doing a shale gas, it's a matter of a few million, you, know, you can drill another well, or you can postpone it for another six months. So you have much more ability to have a, a quick adaptation. So that, I think, affects the industry a lot. And we're also seeing it in the, the deep, you know, like deep water horizon. Macondo, of course, we had an example of the risks associated with it. We now see new uh, deep water uh, sources like off Mozambique, uh, where there's a much slower development of some of these than we have foreseen just a few years ago. Absolutely well. Thank you, Carl, for so much for coming in and speaking to us again today. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But for all the latest Dukascopy updates, do keep clicking back. Goodbye for now.